Greetings. We're into that holiday, that wonderful Christmas season, and so we're going to utilize the opportunity of, of the beautiful scenery here in the church building to uh, showcase while we're doing this uh, sermon series of above all. Uh, Jesus Christ is above all. We're looking at the names of Jesus uh, throughout this season. Back in 1960s, San Francisco, Haight-Ashbury District uh, reverted to high rent a district, and many of the hippies moved on down the coast to, to Santa Cruz. Uh, they had children, but didn't name their children the, the Melissas and the Bretts kind of names. Eventually, Little Moonbeam and Earth and Love and Precious Promise all ended up in public schools. Every fall, the parents bravely would apply the name tags to their children and kiss them goodbye and send them off to school on the school bus. So it was for a fruit stand. The kindergarten teacher thought the boy's name was a little odd, but, uh, but then tried to make the best of it. Would you like to play with the blocks, fruit stand? She offered. Fruit stand, how about a snack? He accepted hesitantly. But by the end of the day, his name didn't seem any stranger than apples or sun rays. And as the teacher led the children out to the buses, she asked, Fruit stand, do you know which is your bus? He didn't answer, but then that wasn't unusual because he hadn't been answering many questions all day. But lots of kids are shy on their first day of school, after all. But it didn't matter because the teacher knew all she had to do was look at the reverse side of his name tag that the parents had written down the name or the location of the bus stop that he was supposed to take. So the t teacher turned over the, the name tag and there printed neatly on the other side was the word Anthony. <laughs> uh, what is in a name? In our series, above all, the names of Jesus Christ are very descriptive, proving or providing us, I think, a fuller and a clearer picture of who Jesus is and what he has done for us. We have already looked at the name Jesus, which means God saves. God's promise to deliver us uh, from all our sins. He is also the word that we looked at last week, the co-creator of the heavens and the earth, the final word the absolute truth of God. Today I want to read from Isaiah chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, and look at what we're looking at, the name we're going to use today. It says in verse 13, Then Isaiah said, Hear now, your house, you house of David, it's not enough to try the patience of men. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child, and will give the birth to a son, and will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Another name Jesus had, in, as the text said, is Emmanuel. It's especially appropriate at this time of year as we pause to think about the Christmas, the Christ in that Christmas as well. Yet amongst the pageantry and the displays of the season, how many truly understand the importance of the story we put on Christmas music like, Oh Holy Night, or Away in the Manger, and our mind's eye goes back to and is filled with images of Christmas past, with images of a baby child, Jesus, laying in a manger with the shepherds, uh, looking adoringly at the newborn king. But do we really grasp the significance of this moment? In Matthew chapter 1, the angel prepares Joseph and Mary for what was about to take place. And then Matthew sums it up in verse 22 and 23. It shows his understanding of the significance of what the angel was saying. All this took place, he said, to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus is God with us. He is the God in the flesh. About 20 years or so ago, there was a, a popular song, One of Us, by Joan Osborne, that caused quite a stir because within it, one of the lyrics posed the question, what if God were one of us? 
Her question is a good one. And the good news is to that question, there has been an answer. God has become one of us in the person of Jesus Christ. God Almighty left the throne of heaven, wrapped himself in human flesh, and was born as a completely dependent child to a poor young woman, pledged to be married to a common carpenter. On that first night, he was placed in an animal's feeding trough because there was no room for them at the inn. Wow, you could not get humbler circumstances for God to enter into the world. But that is what he did. And that's what is implied in the name Emmanuel. To understand what Matthew intended by using this name, we have to go back to the book of Isaiah to see the original prophecy in its context. The word Matthew interprets to mean God with us appears three times in two Isaiah passages in context of God's promised deliverance to the kingdom Judah during dangerous times. That northern kingdom, Israel, had teamed up with, Is with Syria to fight against Judah, the southern kingdom. Judah's king Ahaz had a lot to be fearful of since his enemies were powerful. And for being a wicked king, he, had, he was in no position to pray to God for his presence and his deliverance. Nevertheless, God sent Isaiah to tell Ahaz that he would deliver them, but not for Ahaz's sake, but out of his faithfulness to his people. So when Isaiah was sent to Ahaz, God provided the king a sign that the message was authentic. As Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David, it is not enough for you to try the patience of men. Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with a child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. In the very next chapter, the name Emmanuel occurs twice more. For although Judah was spared that time in that battle, there is another one coming, another day when they would be conquered by the Assyrian army. But even then, God would thwart the enemies for Emmanuel, and God would be with them. So why does Matthew use Isaiah's prophecy to describe Jesus? Because he wants us to know that Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promise to always be with his people. That this child named Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of that prophecy and is himself God with us. That was the promise given uh, through Isaiah's words to King Ahaz, and it has been his promise to his people all throughout the scriptures. There was a promise that God's made, God made to Moses, who in many ways was uh, an unlikely candidate for deliverer of God's people. Brought up in Pharaoh's household, banished for murdering an Egyptian, a shepherd for his father-in-law. He was 80 years old when God said, go back to Egypt and free my people. And instead of going, Moses offered excuse after excuse. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And this is God's answer. I will be with you. And this is to be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people of Egypt out, you will per, per, uh, worship God on this mountain. God claims Moses' fears, uh, calms Moses' fears, I should say, by assuring him, I will be with you. When Moses faced Pharaoh, he could do so with confidence because God enabled him to perform miracles. And when Pharaoh still refused, God brought up a, a series of plagues. And when Pharaoh finally gave in and freed the people, they were still out there wandering in the desert, but God remained with them, leading them with a pillar of cloud by the day and a fire by night and sustaining them with manna from heaven. In fact, God never left them. He is true to his promises. 
How about God's promise to Joshua? When Joshua replaces Moses as Israel's leader, uh, the promised land lay before them and it wasn't gonna be an easy thing for them to just take it over like it's on a silver platter. There was gonna be a lot of work to be done in its conquest. Yet this is the promise God gave to Joshua. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land. I swore to their forefathers to give to them. Be strong and courageous because I will always be with you. How reassuring that must have been for a young, new Joshua, the leader of the God's people. Then remember Jesus' promise to his disciples, Matthew 28. They'd been through a roller coaster ride of hope and depression. Their hope in Jesus was dashed when he was crucified. They saw his body laid in a tomb. They wept for him. Some were, had scattered, others denied him. The women went to the tomb and they came back crying because his body had, was gone. But then they witnessed the most remarkable thing of all time. Jesus had risen. Jesus appeared to them a number of times over a period of several days. There was no doubt. They were jubilant because he is alive. And then just before Jesus is taken up to heaven, he gives them a, a set of lasting instructions of this of Matthew 28, 19. Go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And then he concludes it with this one last promise. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. His di disciples would face continuing persecution uh, as the teachings about Christ would indeed spread out through all the world. And they would ultimately face death just as the teacher had, had also died. But they carried to their graves Jesus' reassuring promise, I will be with you always. And that's the promise of Emmanuel to you, even today, that he will be with each of us. True, he is no longer with us in the flesh as he had been with his disciples, but he is with you in an even more special way today through his spirit. His promise, therefore, is to all of us. In John 14, it says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The word cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, and he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. The promise continues. God, Jesus, Emmanuel, continues to be with each of us through the precious Holy Spirit, the counselor, the advocate, the comforter who has come and now lives with us and in us. And God's promise remains. He will be with us uh, through all time, through the tough times, through the times of trials. There will always be struggles with job losses, financial difficulties, family turmoil. We'll live, we do live in a harsh world. And the reality is that trouble and tough times will always be hitting us but know that he will be with you forever. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Trust that his plan and his power will prevail. David knew what it was like to face tough times and he knew what it was to seek solace in the comforting arms of Jesus or of the God. Some of his Psalms reflect his awareness of the presence of God in his life. The Lord is a refuge of the oppressed a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name will trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Psalm chapter 9. And Psalm 27 says, For in the day of trouble 
He will keep me safe in his dwelling, and he will hide me in the shelter. Emmanuel is God's promise that you are safe in his dwelling, aboding, abiding place. He is with you. I know the holidays can be tough for some of you, possibly celebrating the holidays for the first time without a loved one. You know the pain of separation, be it from death or divorce or distance. Is there someone in your, your life you miss very much? These may be difficult days for you. Remember, Emmanuel is God's promise that you are not alone. And the fact that we especially feel his presence at certain times in our lives doesn't mean that he isn't always with us all of the times. In the ordinary moments of life, no, he is always with us. When you're driving to work in the mornings, he is there. When you're dropping the kids off for school, he is there. Even in times when you're in the middle of an argument with someone, he is there. So we don't have to face anything in life without him. And this is the unfathomable part of his promise, I think, that he is there even when we have failed him and failed to be with him. None of us is perfect. We all know that we have fallen short of him, and the Bible confirms it. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. But that's why he came in the flesh in the first place. If we had been able to be perfect and get to heaven on our own, there would have been no reason for God to have become Emmanuel. But we aren't, and he is. And so we can take confidence in the fact that God is with us, and it is a promise that God keeps. Booker T. Washington, in his book, Up From Slavery, wrote of an ex-slave who was... Uh, exemplify the kind of sacrifice it sometimes takes in keeping promises. The slave agreed to a contract to pay for his freedom. The master allowed him uh, to go north where he could gain greater wages as long he was, as he would return annually, traveling back down south to pay for his annual payment for his freedom to his master. Well, after President Lincoln issued the uh, Emancipation Proclamation, that ended slavery so that this ex-slave, uh, though he still owed $300, he was freed from that. He was legally free and didn't have to pay his former master that final $300 payment. But he was a man of his word. So he walked from Ohio back down to Virginia and presented his former master with the full amount that he had promised him down to the very last dollar. Sometimes promises come with a very high personal price. Jesus came to live among us so that we might one day live with him. He gave us his promise that he would never leave nor forsake us. And he paid for that promise with his life to give us our freedom from sin, to live with him where he's always near. Do you have that hope that he is, that you have found he to be the Emmanuel? Does God live within you? Many celebrate Christmas without the hope or the assurance of Emmanuel, of God who came to be with us. He intends for that purpose for you today to last for all eternity. Will you receive the greatest gift of Christmas? Emmanuel, to be the God with you for hope, salvation, trust, reliance, and a wonderful purpose for this life and for a life to come. In Jesus' name, amen.